What's going on guys? Stepping here with you, SNE's Garage. Just this past week I read an article that Toyota is going to be basically dropping the 2GR FKS V6 engine uh, from their new redesign of the Toyota Highlander. Um, and I kind of wanted to talk about it. I wanted to talk about why manufacturers are starting to switch from uh, larger displacement V6 engines to smaller four-cylinder turbo engines and uh, why we may be seeing the end of the V8 and V6 uh, naturally aspirated engine um, in new automobiles coming forward. Uh, so let's, let's get right into that. So like I mentioned earlier, Toyota has basically announced that they're going to be dropping the V6 engine from the Highlander and they're going to be replacing that with a 2.4 liter uh, turbocharged engine. Um, now Toyota is by far not the first manufacturer to go this route. Um, as early as 2011, Hyundai discontinued their 3.3 liter V6 engine in the Sonata um, and replaced that with a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine. Um, and then in 2013, they did the same thing for the Santa Fe. They took the 3.5 liter V6 that they had, uh, took that out, and the Santa Fe Sport also got a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine. Uh, now, Toyota held on to the V6 a little bit longer because uh, they were able to do some advancements to it with the FKS iteration of the 2GR. Um, they were able to add port and direct injection. They were able to add VVT-IW to the intake cams. Um, and they were basically, they enabled this engine to run a modified Atkinson cycle um, at low load. So they were able to make this engine keep up with miles per gallon that similar 2.0, you know, similar four-cylinder turbocharged engines were getting. Uh, but they've come to a point where I guess they, they don't want to push the V6 any further and they feel that they're better um, with a a four-cylinder turbo. Um, now in the article that I read, the new four-cylinder turbo engine is going to get almost the same exact fuel mileage as the V6. However, um, they are able to get better emissions out of the four-cylinder and with um, CAFE, corporate average fuel economy, and other, other government entities pushing for, for greener cars, um, we're going to see the whole industry making a switch um, going to smaller uh, small displacement turbo engines just because you can kind of get the best of both worlds out of them. I can understand why Toyota held on to the V6 for as long as they could. Um, there's no other way to put it. It's easier, it's easier for a manufacturer to make a V6 reliable than it is a four cylinder turbo because a V6 you have two more cylinders and that much more displacement to make the same amount of power um, that you're asking a four-cylinder to do with two less cylinders and a big turbo pushing air into it. Uh, so in order to get a four-cylinder turbo to make comparable power to a V6, you're stepping up cylinder pressures a lot. And with, with increased cylinder pressures, you have to design a stronger piston. You have to make the cylinder walls a little bit stronger. You need a stronger connecting rod, a stronger rotating assembly. It's just a lot more goes into building a reliable four-cylinder turbo than a larger displacement V6. Now, when I was in the market for this car, I cross-shopped it with a couple of different cars. And the cars that I cross-shopped it with were four-cylinder turbo engines. Uh, I shopped it with the Hyundai Sonata N-Line and the Kia K5 GT. They were both cars that I was looking at. Um, but personally, my tastes, I like the linear power band of a naturally aspirated engine. A, a turbocharged engine has a much flatter torque curve and the torque comes in all at once once that turbo spools and I didn't like that. What I like about a naturally aspirated V6 engine is that the power output is linear. The higher the RPMs go, the more power you get out of it. Whereas with a four cylinder turbo, as soon as that turbo spools, you're blowing the tires off of the car and I didn't like that. I like that this car, when you step on it, yeah, it chirps the tires a little bit, but the power doesn't really come in until you get above, say, 3,500 or 4,000 RPMs, and that's that's kind of uh, the driving experience that I like. I don't like it when my torque is, you know, maxing out at 2,000 RPMs, blowing the tires off the cars, and a lot of people are like that, and um, 
a lot of people chose a V6 Camry over other options because of that. The V6 just drives better. It's less stressed. Uh, it's a lot smoother, and it's a, it's just a, a much better refined power plant than a four cylinder. Most four cylinders on the market need what's called a balance shaft in the oil pan, which is driven by the crankshaft by either a chain or a gear uh, to basically cancel out those secondary vibrations because a four cylinder by design is not a balanced engine. A V6, believe it or not, isn't a perfectly balanced engine either, but it does not require a balance shaft to run smooth. So why are manufacturers switching to a smaller displacement turbocharged engine? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, like I mentioned before, is CAFE, Corporate Average Fuel Economy. They basically take every model that a manufacturer makes, average their fuel economy out, and they have to be at a certain level. And if they're not at that level, they get fined. A lot of times it's a big fine, and they don't want to pay the government fine, so they're going to do whatever they can to get that CAFE rating higher. And with a four-cylinder turbo engines, like I said before, you kind of get the best of both worlds. When you keep it out of boost, and you're just cruising, you're getting the fuel economy of a four cylinder. But when you step on it, you build boost, then you have the power output similar to a V6. So like I said, you kind of get the best of both worlds. But with a turbocharged engine comes, like I mentioned before, you need, you need to build a better engine. You need a better rotating assembly. You need better connecting rods. You need better pistons. You need thicker cylinder walls. And uh, you're really stepping those, those cylinder pressures up. And it's hard to tune a turbo four cylinder to run on regular gas um, just because of something called low speed pre-ignition. And LSPI, low speed uh, pre-ignition, can really damage a four cylinder turbo. It could actually any engine because what happens is that fuel mixture, that air fuel mixture ignites before the cylinder is at top dead center and tries to push down on it while it's coming up. And you can crack pistons, you can break ring lands, you can, you know, break connecting rods. So there's a lot of R&D that goes into making a reliable four cylinder turbo engine. And I think that's part of why Toyota waited so long to make the switch because they were able, like I said, to, to tweak their V6 uh, to get similar mileage ratings to other four cylinder turbos that are on the market. Personally, I feel that Toyota is going to follow suit and the eighth generation Camry so far 2018 to 2023 they've announced that they're not going to be changing it um, is going to probably be the last generation of Camry that you can get with a V6 engine and uh, they've had a V6 iteration of the Camry since I want to say the, the, the second generation um, they started with, I want to say it was the 2VZ, and then they switched to the 3VZ, and then they switched to the 1MZ, 3MZ, 2GR, 2GR FKS. So they've had an, a version of a Camry with a V6 all the way from the early 90s. So it's going to be a big change for those of you that have, you know, been purchasing Camrys and, and V6s to, to go from a, a V6 to a four cylinder turbo because the driving experience is different and the power just comes in different. Um, I've owned a four cylinder turbo car, I turboed my Subaru BRZ and while I loved it, it was a blast, um, I just feel that the, the linear power curve of, of a natural aspirated engine is, is more suited to my driving style and I'm going to be keeping this car for a long time if the new Camry does not have a V6 in it. Now, I don't think that reliability is going to suffer um, from changing from the V6 to the four cylinder turbo, uh, at least in Toyota land, because Toyota puts a lot of R&D into anything they do. And like I said before, I feel like that's why they waited as long as they did, because they wanted to basically kink out all of the, you know, work out all the kinks that they could uh, with this four cylinder power plant that they've created. They used it in, in the Lexus model. I forget exactly which model it was. Um, but they've basically probably been able to work all the kinks out of it um, and get it to where they feel they can offer it in a, you know, a, a mainstream Toyota product uh, with minimal issues. Now, as with any first model year for a new generation, there may be some kinks that need to be worked out to get it perfect. 
Um, so if I were you, I probably wouldn't buy a first model year of this new generation Highlander. Um, I would wait a year or two for Toyota to work, you know, their kinks out and uh, get everything going smoothly. But I don't think there's going to be uh, a mass engine failure like Hyundai had with, with their Theta 2 four-cylinder engines. That's a totally different story. I think, I think Toyota is going to work this out and make it so we as the consumer don't suffer from this and and who knows maybe it'll it'll be just as potent as this v6 and uh we'll see how it works but i really don't think uh that reliability is going to suffer from toyota making this change now this new four cylinder engine that toyota is using with the turbocharger um is still going to employ toyota's d4s uh direct injection system uh but the fuel injectors the direct injectors mainly are being moved from under the intake manifold to on top of the valve cover and they're actually using an air to water intercooler which is going to be up under that intake manifold uh, for ch cooling the charge air basically so those injectors are being moved uh, you might hear them a little bit more now that they're going to be right on top of the valve cover uh, so I'm excited to see how one of these things sound. A lot of direct injected engines sound like a sewing machine. You just hear those injectors firing um, and you hear the, the GDI pump. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it sounds like Toyota's got it down pat. And, and this engine uh, shares a lot with the current four-cylinder that's offered in the 8th generation Camry, the A25A. Um, it's very similar to that. It's basically, it's based off of that from what I've read. Um, so it's an engine that Toyota has been making since at least 2018 and we're now going into model year 2023. So they've worked all the kinks out of that engine and I'm sure all of the tweaks that they've made to that engine to make it better are going to follow suit and, and into the, you know, this new engine that they're making as well. So with that being said, uh, admittedly, I am kind of sad to see that Toyota is starting to phase out their, their V6 engine. Uh, they've been using an iteration of this 2GR V6 uh, from as early as 2005 in the third generation Avalon. And uh, I've owned three or four cars with a variant of this engine and I, I, I love them. They sound good, they have nice power, they're very smooth, and they get good mileage. Uh, so I'm sad to see it go, um, but hopefully this new four-cylinder that they're likely going to be putting into the Camry and, and other vehicles that have the 2GR in it, uh, hopefully this engine you know, stands up to Toyota's reputation of reliability and durability, and uh, let's see how it works out. But if this video helped you at all or you like the information in it, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.